What's up, money maestros? Welcome back to Fresh BI, where we build beautiful dashboards. Today, we're diving deep into the world of cash flow, and I've got something special for you a Power BI cash flow wizard that will transform the way you manage your business. Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll be a cash flow wizard yourself, pulling all the strings of your financial destiny. Before we jump into the magic of building the cash flow wizard, let's understand the basics sensitivity analysis and scenario analysis. Those are the two superheroes of cash flow management. Sensitivity analysis lets us identify vulnerabilities, helping us make proactive adjustments to mitigate risks. Scenario analysis, on the other hand, gives us a crystal ball into potential futures, preparing us for diverse financial landscapes. But why do both of these matter? Because they are the bedrock of effective cash flow management, ensuring that you're not just ready for what's coming, but also steering your financial ship with strategic preparedness. Traditional cash flow management bogs us down in columns of numbers and rows, but this Power BI cash flow wizard transforms that data into a visual symphony. The cash runway allows you to use stacked bars and overlaid lines, turning mundane data into actionable insights. But it doesn't stop there. Sensitivity analysis takes on a new dimension with Power BI's interactive features, sliders that allow us to dynamically adjust sales orders and accounts payable instantly, visualizing the impact on projected cash flow. And scenario analysis becomes your financial compass with buttons like max allowable decrease in sales orders and minimum allowable days in cash cycle. You can explore critical scenarios, strategizing without compromising your cash reserves. Okay, great, Michael. You've done a lot of talking. Let's actually build it. Here we are in a familiar empty Power BI workbook. I'm taking the liberty of already filling in a data set. This just came from an Excel file. You can imagine how this data set might have all sorts of transactions in it. In this case, I've got AR, AP, bank balances, payroll, purchase order, sales order, everything that you need to build a good cash flow. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a background in here to give us some sort of structure. The next thing I'm going to do is copy some visuals over from a pre-made workbook just so I can preserve the formatting. The next step is to throw some of our parameters down on this worksheet. The first one is our days and cash collection cycle. We're going to say the minimum amount of days that we'd like to decrease our cash by is 30, and the maximum is 60, with an increment of 1, the default being 0 days. We've got to bring in another parameter here for our sales order increase. This one's actually going to be a fixed decimal with a minimum of 1.00, a maximum of 2.00, an increment of 0 0.10 in a default of 1.00. So this means that so this means that we're allowing ourselves to decrease sales orders by a maximum of 100%, that's our minimum. We're allowing ourselves to increase our sales orders by a maximum of an additional 100%, that's the 200 right there. At an increment of 0.1, meaning that we'd be moving it in 10% chunks and our default is just 100%. So nothing changes, we're staying the same. need a couple tables now. The first one I want to bring in is our due date calendar. Some people like to build these in Power Query, and it's probably more efficient that way, but sometimes I like to be able to do it in DAX. I just find it's a little easier occasionally. This allows me to grab the minimum of my ARAP due date and the maximum of my ARAP due date, plus or minus 60 days, and it automatically generates a calendar for me. Next thing I'm going to build is our imminent transactions table. This just looks at our normal transactions table and spits out any transactions that are greater than or equal to the minimum due date. You'll probably want to change this minimum due date to something more dynamic, like the DAX function today, but for the purposes of this, it's, it's just cleaner that way. Next one is going to be recent transactions, and again, we've bodged the numbers here a little bit just because it's a demo. This minimum due date should probably be something a little more dynamic, like today. Uh, but just for display purposes, I've thrown minimum plus 61 days. So show me any transactions that are less than or equal to the minimum date plus 61 days. And that's not, uh, not going to be best practice in a live workbook, but it, it, it helps us with something like this. Next thing I'm going to do is on these amounts for these tables I just made, I'm going to set these to currency with zero decimals on the amount. I just think it looks a lot better. And last step is to bring through our DAX functions. I like to put all of my DAX functions on a specific table. 
usually a table that's related to the function those DAX measures are performing. In this case, I've just called it DAX. Um, you might want to call this like CF DAX or something uh, for cash flow. And I always leave a preceding underscore on the DAX table. That allows us to have the DAX table always at the top of this list in the data pane. It's usually what I'm working with anyway. Now we need to throw some measures on our DAX table. We'll go through these each one by one later, but for now, the only thing important to know is that the CF stands for cash flow, and I've specifically not left any blank spaces in these names. I find it's very difficult to work with DAX measures if there's names everywhere. All right, just like that, our visual at the bottom automatically populates. That's because I already brought through this visual from a different workbook, just to preserve the formatting. Um, but you can see here that I've got our due date running across the x-axis and our column y-axis. So this is the individual columns. We've got sales orders, accounts payable, accounts receivable, purchase orders. And then we've got a line that represents our cumulative balance. What this is telling me at first glance is that I'm going to run out of cash on February 28th-ish. And I should probably do something about that, whether it's turning up sales orders or um, increasing pricing. I'm not sure, but this is definitely telling me that if nothing changes today, if my sales team doesn't kick it into high gear, I've got about a month of cash sitting around. Let's take a look at how these different sliders affect things before we get into scenario analysis. So this is sensitivity analysis that we're working with here. And the first one is days in cash collection cycle. So in this workbook, uh, all of our transactions have a default term of 30 days. So if I want to adjust that, I'm going to do that with this parameter. Let's start with saying, what happens if I'm really lazy with my cash collection? And I, I don't take it seriously, and I, I fumble really hard. I add an additional 50 day, 15 days to my cash collection cycle. With this sensitivity, I can see that actually I lose cash a day earlier. Not collecting soon enough isn't that big of a deal, but it definitely isn't good. What if I go the opposite direction? What if I turn up my frequency of cash collection and I say, you know, I'm going to try to collect everything five days earlier. Holy smokes, this is a big change. We can see that we've got more cash to deal with. It pushes out our cash by about a week, which is pretty good. And I'm sure if I turn this up even more to maybe like a negative seven, it keeps us going even longer and even dips us back into the, into the black later on in March. Now that isn't the only sensitivity we have access to. What happens if the sales team starts taking naps every day and they're only churning out sales orders at 50%? Well, it actually doesn't impact things that much. You can see that cash collection in this specific data set is the most important factor. What if I turn it up and I say, I want to go time and a half faster? Well, in this case, we don't see very much change either, but we're still running out of cash in the first couple days of March. And uh, we dip back into the into the black there very briefly in the six and seven. Let's talk about scenarios now. I'm going to bring through some pre-made buttons that I have in a different worksheet. So we've got two different scenarios here. The first one is the max allowable decrease in sales orders, and the second one is the minimum allowable days in cash cycle. Let's set these up so that way they're using bookmarks. The first step is to open the bookmarks pane, and let's choose the max allowable decrease in sales orders. Let's go back to that scenario where the sales order starts taking naps every day, but we'll keep leave our days in cash collection cycle alone. Go ahead and take a bookmark. We'll rename this to MAD in sales orders. And then the other one is minimum allowable days in cash cycle. So let's go ahead and run a scenario where we think we can collect 10 days early on our cash, but we'll leave sales orders alone. We'll call this MAD in cash cycle. The last thing to do is set the action item on these bookmarks. Here we go. So now we have two different scenarios that we can toggle between and then further adjust the sensitivities on. You can imagine how in a larger organization with a more robust data set or more scenarios or more sensitivities, that this becomes very powerful. You can set a default scenario and then further adjust the sensitivities from there. The last thing we're going to do here in this Power BI workbook is just have a quick look at these measures. So as I mentioned before, the naming convention for me is always what part of the workbook is this DAX measure affecting, in this case, cash flow. I don't have any blank spaces. It makes it easier to reference these measures later on. And we're running a couple variables here. So this first variable is choosing 
the max calendar date. The reason I chose max here and not selected value is sometimes it's a little bit easier to use max, especially when you're doing sums, and I thought I might need that later on. In our return statement, we're just saying calculate the sum of the AR AP amount, filter it so that way the source is set to AP, and then choose a due date that matches the max calendar date selected. Nothing too fancy here. On accounts receivable, it's the exact same as AP, except we're choosing AR, and then we're adding in that parameter for days in cash collection cycle. So a minus value would move back our due date and a positive value would move forward our due date. Purchase orders is the exact same as AP as well, except we're choosing purchase orders instead of AP. And then sales orders is the last different one here. So we're saying the same as we are in AR and AP to start with, go ahead and choose the amount where it's a sales order. And then just like AR, we're saying choose a due date plus the days and cash collection cycle value parameter where it equals the max calendar date. And then we're multiplying it by that second parameter. So the sales order percent increase or decrease value. So that's why a 1.0 value means no change and a 1.5 value means increase by 50%. The final measure here is the CF cumulative balance. There probably is a way for us to use our pre-existing measures, um, but I like to keep it a little bit simple in this workbook. The main difference between this measure and all of the other measures is we have a less than or equal to on that date there instead of an equals, which is what we have in our previous measures. Everything is summed together, and we have an exclusion here just to make sure that we're not calculating that cumulative balance out in the future where there aren't individual transactions. So we're just checking to make sure that we're not looking for a value that's in the future that hasn't happened yet. And there you have it, wizards. That's the power of Power BI. If you found this video insightful, please smash that like button, subscribe for more financial adventures, and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another spellbinding episode. Until next time, keep your cash flows flowing, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Fresh BI. Visualize your business.